What's up everybody, General Geibel here. So I receive uh, some questions from some beginners and they're always asking like, hey man, what synthesizers do I need? What do you use? What do I need to produce raw style? What do I need to produce hardcore or French core, up tempo, whatever? Uh, pretty much everything appears every once in a while. And the answer is, pretty much nothing. You need just one or two good synthesizer which you know in and out and maybe some other plugins where you can tweak the sound much better and you're pretty much good to go. So this video is not really about like what do you need or what type of synthesizers you really really need that you can't live without. Um, this video is more about like um, what I'm using, why I'm using it and you know um, I've prepared like my sort of top five but I also put in some honorable mentions. I know like a lot of people using the same synthesizers uh, because they've seen them like you know they see the videos from other DJs and see oh that guy's using this one, that guy's using this one. I'm not like that. I kind of got my own workflow and you know probably you will see some stuff which I use on a regular basis which um, not everybody is using or like you probably never heard of. But that might be interesting, so let's dive right into it. But before we get started, once again, as always, I would like to ask you to subscribe to my channel on YouTube right now. Uh, you can also activate the notifications button so you get a notification when something new is up. And I'm trying to be more regular with the videos because I see like a lot of you guys really looking forward to see more and more. And I would also like to ask you to do the same on my Facebook page. Um, it's slash General Geibel. And also there you can put on that, like you see my posts first. So you don't miss a post, you don't miss an update. And, you know, we got some good platform to have a discussion. All right, so let's um, get started right away. My number one synthesizer is the F-Expansion Strobe. It's part of the F-Expansion Decam Synth Squad. Unfortunately, this series was discontinued a couple years ago, but I'm still using it in every production. And since I bought that one, I think it was somewhere in 2008, um, in every production, every sample pack, everything I've done, uh, this synth was used. And this synth is a basic synth, um, it's sort of like an analog model synth which sort of supposed to recreate the sound of an SH-101 but it got some couple of more uh, oscillators and you can do, you can pretty much uh, modulate everything with everything. And uh, what that synth is uh, really great for is uh, bass sounds, even though for our music we don't use too much of bass sounds but you know, if you go for that, you can like really go crazy. So let's uh, check a couple of the possibilities out. Like this analog bass stuff. And pretty much in every track where there's a bass, um, I use that synth. Also for mono layers for leads and also occasionally for screeches and also some noise effects and all that type of stuff. It's really, really great. And um, that's kind of my number one. Uh, together with the synth squad, there is also the cypher, which is a more advanced synthesizer. It has um, some frequency modulation. It has more filters. It also has like a MOOC type of filter. Um, all of them got like the output distortion, which is really great. Uh, I can show you what I mean by that. So that's kind of the sound with the filter and all that's distorted. An interesting thing about those synthesizers is they don't have any effects. So you don't find the chorus, you don't find the delay, you don't find the reverb on them. It's just a pure synth. And the plugin developer should have big balls and like really believe in his product if he doesn't put in all those sound, all those uh, reverbs and effects because they make sounds much nicer. So all the dry synths are like, you know, it has to sound amazing. And that one does. Since the strobe 
and the cipher got discontinued um f expansion came up with the strobe 2 which is a big ass evolution from the strobe 1 it's um it has even more possibilities and that one has effects built in which are also really really nice unfortunately i could never really get my head around that synth somehow um i didn't really like um programming it so i prefer i still using the strobe 1 um but also to be fair i haven't put too much time in like getting into strobe 2 my number two synth is um, the silent one to be honest i just started using it a couple of years ago because i was doing a collaboration with another guy and um i needed you know he used that one all over the place so i had to buy it so since i bought it uh, i also made a sample pack it was the raw style toolkits i think was the name which contains a couple of presets for that so you know since i had to work with it i kind of learned it and it's not a complicated synth but it's very powerful this one is capable of creating pretty much all of the bread and butter sounds um, you can do great leads with that great basses you can make nice plugs and obviously also some decent screeches and stuff and the great thing is it has a delay and a reverb in it um not the best sounding delay not the best sounding reverb but since that synth got so overused in the past 10 years probably this uh delay and reverb kind of kind of became a standard because you hear it on pretty much every production recently i made a full sound bank for for that synthesizer um it's part of the sample pack raw style evolution it contains 125 sounds and you know you can make a full production with that with that synthesizer alone it's 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 super easy obviously you're a little bit limited if you want to go like with like really crazy stuff and like dubstep stuff and whatever um you can create some wobbles and stuff but there are other synthesizers who are much better for those type of tasks i'm gonna just show you some of the sounds from my sound set uh so you can get an idea what this synthesizer is capable of My number three is Native Instruments Massive and also that one I just started using not long ago probably also a couple of or just two years ago and also for the same pack the raw style toolkits uh, since I had to provide the sounds and they had to be from synthesizers which people actually have and pretty much you know you know pretty much everybody got it I had to use the silent and the massive and I had to start getting into it and using it and this is a very very powerful tool so there's pretty much no sound you cannot do with that if you follow my channel you've seen I use the massive as a source for my kick drums I use it as a layer for um, lead sounds I make dubstep sounds with that growls whatever um, this synth is just really amazing and it's capable of pretty much everything my number four of the most used synthesizers is um, an Ableton stock plugin um, and I know some of you will say like yeah well I don't have Ableton um, there is uh, the FM8 from Native Instruments which is similar to the operator the FM8 can do a whole lot more than the operator but the operator makes me happy as it is and i pretty much never got to feel i need more oscillators or with like a fan synth they call it operators um so and i don't need like additional effects because i can bring them in the chain right away because the operator as the strobe and the cipher it doesn't have internal effects and yeah obviously it's a frequency modulated synth and that means you know you can align those oscillators um if you want and like put them like you know a goes into b b goes into c c into d and they modulate each other and you can come up with all different types or you can use them by themselves without any frequency modulation and you know just to show you some of the possibilities um you know 
you can also make like all those great growls and um, all those type of stuff with, with that synth but also like bell sounds and you know some there there's there's a lot of like everything with like some complex harmonic structure is possible with that and number five of my most used synthesizers is the rock pop and raw um, that synth got released already a while ago. The, the special thing about it is um, it has like a full distortion in that synthesizer built in, like a great distortion unit, and it has pretty much everything you need, also some face distortion. Um, so pretty much most most of the sounds you make where you got like long chains of plugins after you're done in the, your synthesizer, you can do it inside it. But when it was released, I wasn't like really impressed because like it sounded to me, it sounded very metallic and I just didn't like the sound by itself. And I um, went through the presets and I didn't have the impression like you could use too much of them because they've been kind of super nice and creative, but I haven't seen the possibility to, you know, bring them into your track and like make them work within the song context. Um so fast forward a couple of years i was pretty bored and uninspired and couldn't didn't know what to do and i don't know for some reason there was like some sale or something and you know i just went in and bought the raw and you know because like i needed a different sound to you know just get some inspiration and motivation to do something so i bought it even though I didn't like it in the beginning or after like testing the demo. Uh, but then I started like really getting into it. It was also the first time I read a manual and learned a lot about it. And I started getting into it, started, you know, told myself I'm going to use it in every production. Everything I make, I'm going to use at least once. So and it's, if even if it's just a simple riser, I'm going to use it. And I've done it and I kind of got familiar with it and I kind of you know learned about the strengths and weaknesses of, of that synth and that led to me doing like half a sound bank for that synth uh, which uh, is uh, you can buy uh, on my sample pack raw intensity and you know there's like the full demo for the sound set which is like some four minutes and contains all 65 sounds and there are no additional effects, nothing, just maybe some low cuts just to keep the mix clean. And you can hear this synth can actually work in the song context. Um, you just need to learn how to use it. And a lot of sounds you can make very, very easy and very, very fast with that. All type of acid sounds, distorted lead sounds, screeches and stuff. It's super easy, super handy. But yeah, you have to know what that synth is good for. Um, like, per, for instance, like... I wouldn't use it for anything which is supposed to sound clean because uh, I'm thinking there are synths which sound cleaner by themselves, so I'm better going for them. But everything distorted, dirty, metallic, this is this synthesizer is really great for. And here are some examples. Those are some sounds from my sample pack, the raw intensity from that sound set. Just you know, browsing through, check it out. <laughs> Those are my top five synthesizers, which I use all the time. Obviously, it's not only them. I use much more. But as I said, like Strobe is in every production, silent and massive in the past couple of years, ended up being also always there. Operator pretty much too. Raw, not always, but lately it's getting more. As I promised, um, let's get some honorable mentions. Uh, the first thing, uh, the first synth to mention, obviously, is x Serum. It's um that number one since since it's got released, everybody has been has been talking about it and it's saying like it's the greatest one. And I totally un agree because um there is pretty much nothing that synth can't do. And it already comes with a great selection of presets and obviously a lot of sound designers went on it and you can, you know, buy millions of sounds on top of that. Um, the reason why it's not in my top 5, or it's not even close in my top 20, is because 
even though I got it already since a year, I um, rarely use it um, because usually when I do music, I got to move on and um, I got my workflow. I'm familiar with my synths. I'm getting my results very, very fast and I'm, it's still on my bucket list um, to learn to work with Serum because I'm pretty sure once you get a hang of it, um, you never need another synth again, especially when you're a beginner um, and, you know, you're looking for the right synth um, or like have a limited budget and you have money just to buy one synth. I advise you to get a Serum and, you know, try to learn it in and out. As I said, you know, if you get that one, you're pretty much covered and the rest is just luxury. On top for the Serum, the new update on Ableton, it has the new synthesizer called Wavetable. You can open it up like that. And so far, I just been playing around with it a little bit because I was actually busy getting shit done. And, um, but yeah, I love the Ableton internal stuff and that synth is really, really great. Um, but I can't tell you too much because I really didn't went too much into detail. I would say um, if you got Ableton, you can save the money on Serum because that one is able of doing pretty much everything the Serum can do. Obviously, you don't have the internal effects, which you got in Serum, but you got also the OTT compressor and everything in Ableton. So if you got like the Ableton Suite Edition, the big one, you pretty much covered anyway but um then you probably don't need the serum so if i knew that would come before i wouldn't get the serum anyway next is the spire uh, you will probably occasionally hear some noise because i don't own a spire this just is a demo of it and um yeah i worked with a couple of guys i worked in other studios where people using it and it's just, it is an amazing synthesizer it's um, unbelievable how great and cool stuff you can make with that you can make pretty much everything with it as well and it has a nice sound by itself oh there's the noise and there are also millions of presets to it it comes with a bunch of them anyway and it sounds great it sounds really great It's like the EDM machine, you know? And the great thing is you can, like, in the Matrix, you can also uh, modulate everything with everything and you can put multiple parameters on one, uh, on one source. And so you can, you know, you can program the mod wheel that you do multiple things at the same time with that synthesizer. It's great for like risers and effects. So you can say like, or with the pitch band, you raise up the pitch and with that also you're gonna bring up more, more of the reverb. You can bring up at the same time, open the filter and stuff. So that is really great. And the filters are also great, it's, and also the distortion as well. All right, in order to continue with our honorable mention, we have to open up Logic, because Logic is a very, very great program, great sequencer with amazing plugins. Um, the only thing which I don't like about Logic too much is um, the workflow. I was on Logic for like almost a decade until I discovered Ableton and um, got really good in that. But the synths, the sounds, everything Logic provides is, is, is really, really great. Um, and, you know, since I was that long on Logic, I know all the synths in and out. And um, let's continue with our own mentions. Um, the ES1, it's a simple synthesizer. It just has like one oscillator and one sub oscillator. Not too many modulation possibilities, but the sound by itself is really great. So before I got on strobe, uh, that was like my go-to synth to make bass sounds. I also use it a lot for effect sounds. Um, all those type of whooshes and washes and up filters, down lifters, whatever. It's also an amazing synth for that. Next one, the ES2. Um, it's a kind of a less great sounding version of Silent, but a lot of people aren't really f aware of the endless possibilities which that synthesizer has because you can actually use all those different wavetables, 99 of them, 
just by right clicking on the sign logo and uh, let me turn off those filters uh, those oscillators so we got a sign and then we can like really go wild and look for everything else that synthesizer you can also make everything with that really um, you just need to learn how to process it because the sound by itself it's good but it's you know it's not as fat and not as rich in my opinion as like uh, silent this is a great synthesizer so if you're a logic user you know stop downloading your plugins now get that one right because if you know that one in and out you're really great and that's actually one thing i really really miss sometimes because um Obviously, I knew that plugin in and out, and I was very fast with it and could create all the sounds. That also was something that helped me back for quite a while to switch to completely to Ableton, but uh, I did it at some point and then regret it. Last but not least, we got the Alchemy, which um, originally was uh, from Camel Audio. I wrote a review for that one like many, many years ago for a popular German online magazine and back then I received the copy of that and that one ended up being on each production for probably something like four years or something as soon as they discontinued it after uh, Apple bought Camel Audio I kept it installed to be able to recall old session but immediately I stopped using it and it was a pain in the ass because I really liked it uh, this synthesizer is also amazing. It's a granular synthesizer. You can load up samples, you can manipulate samples. The possibilities are endless with that as well. And it, it, it has sort of like a little metallic sound, at least it used to have it. But it also helped it to like really cut through the mix really nice. And also the preset collection is, is, is amazing. And there are, there's um, also the browser, how you find your presets is great. And you find so much great stuff um, from like classic synthesizer sounds to like soundscape, sound effects, um, even like drums. And some of them are so fucking great. And like, you know, this uh, synthesizer is also used a lot of in film music and stuff. And um, it is it is just cool so if you are on logic make sure you check it out all right guys um here was a short overview over the scenes um which i'm using on a daily basis um since which are worth to check out and also some synthesizers which come with your daw uh which you shouldn't just you know ignore because i know a lot of people go on the internet and they immediately you know start downloading everything and you know the more presets the better um, I would highly advise you to really take some time to learn how to program sounds to make your own sound design on the long run you are gonna be more creative you are gonna have um, sort of a more unique sound or your own sound and you're gonna end up you know realizing your ideas much much better and much much faster then every time looking for like screech preset number four and it's not that one and whatever so let me know what you guys like to use what are your top picks and you know maybe there is something i should look into it because there are so many synthesizers and a lot of them are really great and uh, you never heard of them before yeah, and I would really like to know what you guys are using, why you're using it. Leave me a comment and maybe we can make a part two at some point. For now, I'm saying thank you for tuning in and I hope I see you next time. Bye bye.